nice, cheap hotel with jacuzzi in it or whatever. They don't even make them no more. But I went to go get us some Burger King. It's all I could afford. Burger King. Mm -hmm. So I was driving. A cop stopped me. And in my mind, I'm 17, 18. I'm thinking, I'm not going to let this guy, Rodney King, me. He not going to do that to me. Mm -hmm. So. What's going on? It's your boy Kane, and that's my homeboy Mitch. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> hey man, we back. We back. We're gonna get this uncomfortable truth out to you guys. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Today's episode: How to combat violence in the black community. A very, very sensitive topic because you have different different avenues. You got avenues of okay. When you say violence, who 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 is the victim and who is the person that's actually committing these crimes towards you know black people because we're just talking about the black community we're not going to talk about uh the white and the asian and that's another topic because you know that's kind of crazy but however um we, we're going to talk about the black community what what affects it? what what affects what what types of things that are going on in the black community as far as in combating violence uh, what 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 do you, what do you got to say about the violence that is happening in the black community, Mitch? Um, well, thank you. I'll mm -hmm. tell you this: um, in the black community, um, it seems like we started, people start. Okay, they live in the projects or live in low income housing. With the black community, I say as far as combating the violence, I hate to say it, but it's the only way we can combat it. It got to start in the house. It got to start in the house, and I'm calling on the men, the black men. I'm, I'm going back in the day, like when we used to march. I know you're gonna hate it, it people. I, I know it. he's gonna hate it. Man, I love it. Okay, he's Man, gonna hate it. it. But uh, I would say this, we as men, we got to be men. So I don't care if you're not with the mother, but you have kids, you care about your kids. We as men have to get together. The things that's happening in the community, in our community, where we so fast to run away from that community, you know, that's everybody's dream. I was in the hood, but I'm getting out of the hood. Okay, fine. But the people that's left there, we got to control that ourselves. We as men have to get together. Like in the old days when they had uh, programs. Now I'm talking about this Black Panther stuff. This way back in the day. Could that work today? Would we stand up as men? Could we get together because the ladies cannot do it? The mamas can't do it. Men, we have to stand up. And I, I agree. I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. It, it comes it comes to the man. The man needs to be a part of the whole situation. That's the only yes. way you're going to come back. Because, I'm a, well, we got to put it out there. Got to put it out there that in all actuality, there's more black on black crime. That is the the violence that you see in the black community, not the police. That's so small. That's so small in the grand scheme of things. We got more to worry about in our community and in policing ourselves versus the police outside that's gonna, you know, shoot an unarmed man or whatever the case may be. Those those cases come few and far between, but those um those people, <laughs> BLM, those people, mm. all those different people, they they tend to, you know, say that, you know, it's the white man. It's the white man. Come on now. Come on, man. Come on. We, 
When are we gonna police ourselves? When are we gonna say that, you know what, there's this drive-by shooting that this little kid got killed because they ops, they were shooting at their ops. Come on now, man. What do you mean by ops? What's that? Well, that's the little slang term for their uh, the, the person that they're trying to kill, somebody that's against what, uh, uh, like, say for instance, a different gang or a different street culture, whatever the case may be on a different side of town. Well, that's my op because they want to come in my community and say, oh, you know, they want to do that. I'm like, oh, come on, come on. You don't even own that community. How are you going to say that that's your community? Okay, you cooking right you now. This. Look, look, you hear this all the time. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. So, yeah, I agree with you. We need to um, bring back the family. We got to bring back the family. Now, you can go ahead and say, okay, well, there's a lot of single mamas out there. Uh, what they say, um, and, and, and I went to this museum. This is so crazy. I went to this museum in Montgomery, Alabama, right? Just recently. Just recently. Shout out to Bama. <laughs> I went there. Bama. I actually went there. And in this museum, they have uh, from uh, from school what what is it from 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 you know being in school to being in prison and they give you a whole little take you through the whole gamut of the whole thing and, and to me where are the parents you got you got this violence that's happening nobody i don't care if you say oh the the um the actual government placed th these drugs in the community what so you're going to blame the government so you're gonna say the government put these drugs in there in the community, and that's what's you know um, forcing these people to to you know sell drugs and commit these crimes and you know and all that. No, you can you can lay this stuff right there, my my uh, porch, my front porch. You can lay it right there. Do I have to touch it? Do I have to touch it? So then you'll run to that fact that oh well, we're in these uh, slums. We you know that's because you're you're living off the government. That's why you're in these projects, these high rises, all these different uh, uh, projects or whatever in the hood. That's why you're there. Because, yeah, I grew up in it. Yes, I was, at, like I say, you know, I'm from Arkansas. So I was in Little Rock, Arkansas during that whole little banging in Little Rock. That was crazy. That was in the 90s. That was crazy. Drive by shooting, Bloods and Crips, all that. I was on 13th Street over there. If anybody can look it up, I was over there. That's where I grew up. But did I get, did, did I fall receptive to that culture? No. Why is that? They'd be like, hey, man, why you didn't, why you wasn't a blood or a crip or whatever? Why you wasn't part of that? The reason is parents. My mother and my father were in my life. They weren't together at the, in my younger ages, but they did play a, a, a big role. You know, my dad, he was actually, you know, like, hey, son, no, this is not where you want to be. This is, you don't want to be out there on the corner. You know, he, and he preached to me, preached to me, preached to me. Well, you know, it was just escaping, no matter what school. So I don't, I don't even want to hear about the schools and the bad school systems and all that. I was in the bad schools making straight A's. Hey, yeah. Kate, hold up one sec. Man, you done, you done said so many things. <laughs> You done said so many things right now, man. Hey, hey, let me tell you. Okay. Let's, go. Let's get it. Um, so many different things to unpack. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the significant things is you said you had both parents. Yeah. People, you heard both parents, even though both parents wasn't there. Okay. At the mm -hmm. same time, couldn't they not be mm -hmm. living together. Yeah. So everybody, regardless if you're not there living with the mother, the child, the baby mama. Come on, let's keep it real. That's what we say, mm -hmm. baby mama, baby father. Mm -hmm. You still can play a part. Yes. Who sure. cares if she's talking to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Who cares if he's talking to somebody else? Because we have to be about our kids. That can decrease some of that violence. Now, you said another thing, okay? People living off the government. Now, when you get placed in those projects, low-income housing, now, I do believe in government assistance when you're down low, if it was a divorce and everything, but we don't have to stay there. So my question to you, Kane, my question look. to you, Kane, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you saying 
Are you saying mm-hmm. I gotta I gotta keep this real too? Go ahead, go ahead, go are ahead, you go are ahead. you against government housing or government assistance? So majority of those people that you're saying, you know, that that has this government assistance, they weren't married. They weren't married. They, of course, they probably had kids, and most of the women are the ones that that are applying for this. You don't see a big long line of men trying to go get government assistance, but you see the women because they got kids, and they the ones that are taking care of the kids. So when I say that it starts in the family, when it starts in the family, um, you would upbring the kid, the uh, the child in a way where they won't be reckless and having babies mm. out of way a lot. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't be reckless. Yeah. Like you know, they wouldn't be, you know, going off with this girl, this, this guy or whatever the case may be. No, no, they wouldn't be doing that. They will be saving themselves for that particular person that comes into their life, you know? So... Yes, of course we got them now. What do we do with them now? All we can do is try to direct them into the right way. So when you say combat the violence, um, right now there's a lot of black on black violence, and you know yes. Chicago leads the way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you can look at every any any holiday weekend, go just go to their website and see how many people got shot. If you was in the medical field and you working in the ER, oh my goodness. Is BLM there in Chicago doing something? Yeah, they got chapters everywhere. They got chapters everywhere. But they don't come out. They don't stand out for that type of stuff because it happens so often. It's like you get numb to it. So they're, since they're numb to it, then they're going to, you know, uh, well, I just, uh, you know, whenever there's a police shooting and they feel like it's unconstitutional or it, they were unarmed, but whatever happened to just, you know, abide by the rules, you know, listen to the officer. Do what you got to do. Don't feel like, because uh, because I've heard you in the past. I've heard you in the past, like, you, and your boy was on the um, speech, uh, Biden. He was on a speech uh, during the State of the Union, bringing up the, the talk. I don't know if you remember saying that, but he brought up the talk. He said, only the black community have to have the talk. I've never had the talk. My dad didn't I sit have- down and talk to me about no police. Maybe about those those that those hooligans out there that's stealing and killing and thugging, selling drugs. He talked to me about that. He ain't talking to me about all right. You make sure you put your hands on the on the on the steering wheel and make sure you turn all the lights on in in the car and let all the windows. Nah, hell no, no man. Well, can come we'll on, say come on. some some of the not to cut you off, but some of mm-hmm. our what? audience and I've told you. Mm-hmm. That I would I've had the talk with my sons and tried to get you to have the talk with your son, but you didn't, and that's fine. But I still believe, I still believe today, uh that black men should talk to their kids. They're uh, male and female about what to do when you're pulled over because of course, of course. I get that I get that you're saying they're they're putting this narrative out that there is special rules for black people when they're pulled over versus anybody that's pulled over. I get that. I get that but no you're saying when you say the talk when you say that you're saying that there's a special rules for black people when they get pulled over. And you've seen these videos and you guys can probably um Google some of these videos. It's ridiculous how they say how to survive when pulled over, is that how? Is that a way to start it off? Is that a way to start it off? No, you saying how you know when you're pulled over, what you need to do when you're pulled over. Period. Not how to survive. That means you're gonna die unless you do these things. So you put that narrative in people's head. I rather, and I, I'm gonna tell you this. And the talk. We now we focusing on the talk. Mm-hmm. Still. I've had the talk, the talk with my sons or whatever. And I, I, I just, and I'm going to still you advocate. Did your, did your dad sit down and talk to you about how to uh, interact with the uh, mm, No, not, not, not? I can't, Why I can't, not? I can't, I can't recall because he wasn't there at the time. I, I can't remember. So I'm going to say no. So did anybody do this talk? Uncle, mama, auntie, anybody sit down and say, Mitch, this is what you need to do when the police pull you over. Did anybody do that? 
No. And you know what to do, right? And I know what to do. Yes, why, I know what why, to do. So why but... you gotta tell your son? So why you gotta tell your son like, all right, I didn't get this, but you need this because this is how the world is. Well, I'm gonna just say this, uh, Kane, uh, mm -hmm. because I love my my boys or whatever, mm -hmm. and anybody, anybody, because we're human, can have a bad day. Okay. It's instances proven where we have seen it on video uh, where everything was done decent and in order with the stop, but the police officer was nervous. They still got shot. I don't want to. I only What's know that? one. Which one? The, the teacher? No. Teacher? Which no. One? The one okay. I was going to talk about is Philando Castillo. That's, that's, that's yeah, the only Orlando one. Orlando Castillo, only, yes, yes. But that's the only that, one, though. Look, look, okay, out of okay. millions. Out of millions. I know. It's, and it's bad scenes. I know your thing. So yes. you're saying that we need to focus that one person that happened to. I'm pretty sure it's probably happened to the other races, too, but we just don't know about it. Kane, I'm going to tell you this little story, and I done told this to you, but I'll share it with the people. Okay. Uh, and people in the in the comment section, uh, put down some things that – if you agree, disagree, or some of your stories right here. But, okay, I'm a little older, dated a little bit. But when okay. Rodney King happened, okay, it had happened. Okay. And I was, okay. uh, I was, uh, I went to the prom and my girlfriend, we got a room and all that stuff. It was nice. Cheap hotel with jacuzzi in it or whatever. They don't even make them no more. But I went to go get us some Burger King. That's all I could afford. Burger King. Mm -hmm. So I was driving. A cop stopped me. And in my mind, I'm 17, 18. I'm thinking, I'm not going to let this guy, Rodney King, me. He not going to do that to me. Mm. So the first thing I did when he stopped, the lights came on because I didn't know why he was stopping me. Mm -hmm. I made a choice right then. I put the car in park. I got out the car. Well, I didn't tell you to get out. I sure did because in my mind, because of what I saw, I said, no, he not. We're going to fight. I'm going to go down fighting. He's not going to beat me. Like they what beat made Rodney you King. think that, though? When an officer approaches your car, be polite. Is there a problem, officer? <laughs> and stay in your car with your hands on the wheel. What the fuck do you want, motherfucker? <laughs> Because of what I saw, I said, no, he not. We're going to fight. I'm going to go down fighting. He's not going to beat me. Like they what beat made Rodney you King. think that, though? What made you think that? Because I, they kept showing it on TV. And, I'm, and I'm the narrative Alabama. behind it. And the narrative behind it. Yes. That this, yes. That this is what's going on. Like this, And that's the reason they had the uh, Watts riots and all of that. Because Well, of we, we riot for so many different reasons. But mm -hmm. you know what? It was due to that. He ended up pulling his weapon out on me. Say, yelled, get back in the car, get back in the car. And when you he came that? up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I went back, got in the car, sat down, and he came and he saw that I was a young kid. You know, hey, what did you do that for? I said, well, to be honest, I said, I'm not going to let this cop Rodney King me. He said, what? That's what you was thinking? I, yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. And I think I just had a, a, a busted light and he talked with me and everything. And it was good. It was good. I went and got my Burger King and came back. But those instances, you never know what can happen. So I do say I have the talk uh, with my kids. And that was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you choose not to do it, but even if it's not the talk, make sure these kids know what they should and shouldn't do because we see it so many times. And mm -hmm. do we have the perception of, have we heard this before? I don't know if it's true, Kane. Black people are more aggressive. They show uh, videos all the time. Why of, are they aggressive, though? That's the question. And it could That's be the so question. Why, why are you aggressive when the police pull you over? For what? Why, 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 why would you be aggressive 
when the post police put you on. Okay, you may have been spent. Man, you don't even know what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see what he got to say. You know, pull over, do what you got to do, listen to him, hear him out. Oh, yeah, you were speeding. Oh, you went through that stop sign, whatever, whatever. You know, whatever it may be. Well, I didn't see the stop sign. I didn't know the speed limit was blah, 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 whatever. You know, hear him out. Don't sit here and think about death. Somebody's going to beat you down for no reason. Just answer the questions. Like, okay, we pay them. Their salary is taken out of our check. Come on now. Come on now. Well, so but, so so I wanna I wanna kind of shift back into the violence in the black yes, community. Yes, yes. Because yeah. I know we're going into the police, mm -hmm. and a lot of black people think the police is the, the, the violence that's in the black community. That's what they think. That's what they think. They think the police is the reason why we have violence. No. It's black on black. It's black on black crime. So if you ask me, if you sit back and tell me, it's like, you know what, Kane? Hey, um, what can we do to combat this? What can we do that we already got the baby mamas? We already got the single families. We are, what do you do? Well, you know what we can do? This I'm is my sure. idea. I'm going to see what you say about this. Well, what we can do is push a narrative of family. Mm. Not feminism, not LGBTQ, not any of that kind of stuff. Push family. If you push family like they push everything else in the media and on TikTok and on YouTube and all these other little platforms or whatever the case may be, if you push that, that's what the kids see. Family. What happened to those family-oriented TV shows? The Cosby Show. What happened to it? They don't do those family type things. They don't. They don't do those movies. They, they do the reality of uh, uh, girls beating up each other in the house or trying to find a date, everybody kissing on one dude, trying to find the right, you know? Where is the family aspect? Hmm. Back in the day, yes. Back in the day, back in the day, they used to have a bunch of family oriented things. And that's what that's that pushes the media because you watched Rodney King, that was media, and that got you upset, and you thought that you probably would get jumped by the police. They pushed that narrative to you. So what's the difference in pushing the narrative of family? You would have seen that same family, be like, man, I want to have a family like that. You know what? I'm gonna find me a nice woman and have a family and try to try to be successful in it. Push that. If you push that, that's how you combat it. But if you don't push it, because all they do is it's the media, it's the because these guys that are doing these things to each other, killing each other and all that in the black community, if they didn't see half the stuff that they do see, they pushing family and music, they pushing family and movies, TV shows, everything, they pushing that, it'll catch. It'll catch. Not about shooting my ops and the, you know, no, no, not at all. That's you know the drug culture and the uh, killing culture that's in music, especially in the, uh, hip hop music. No, no, not at all, not at all. So I think that, that would help combat. You can come with your programs, but who gonna make them go to the programs? You can, you can, you can build it. Do you think they'll come? What will make them come? I don't care if you you got all this money from the government. The government needs to pay us this money so we can build these uh, centers in the inner city. Yeah, you'll get a few people there. But how are you going to get them all? Hmm? How can you? That's I mean, that's the that's what the uh, the, the <laughs> liberal thinking. Thinking, oh, I just build this building here. You know what I mean? You build, you build this uh, community, you build this community center, and then they will come there, and then we have these guys uh, be these uh, motivational speakers for these kids. Yeah, it'll work a little bit, but come on now. Come on. Think about it. Think about well, it. Well, okay, okay. And I'll well, say... Your, well, how would you come back? How would you do Well, well I, I'm, I'm going to go against uh, just building a building. 
or whatever. That's what, that's because, what you want to do. No, no, no. If the building's already there, that'd be great. But oh, I'm going to have to do okay, whatever. I know, I know, I know. But whatever. That, that usually that usually turns into yeah, they'll be manned for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then things will die down. Then at the swing set when they pull, build these parks, it's really nice at the beginning. Yeah. But then yeah. seven months down the line, now the community center, the swing sets. It's where drug transactions goes. We've yeah. done seen this. So I'm going to go yeah. to this right here. You said family. I agree with that. But more than 50% of our black families, the man is not with the woman. And we got it. We got the, that. Yes. We know that. We so, you were trying so, to move forward. We're trying yes. to move forward. We know that they, there's a bunch of single women with kids. We know that. So the agenda is to push family, meaning those kids will know that when I get of age, I want a family. Yes, man. this is not a family that I'm in, but I want a family. And then the you know, the men, if they, you know, we won't, you know, hold them accountable too. So Yes, they need to be a part of their kids' lives. You know what I'm saying? They need to talk to them. They need to sit them down. And you know, yes, this is not a conventional family. What we have here, the ideal family is to have this. Push that on family level, on the lowest level, but then everything else when they're not around you. Well, uh, okay, I, I agree with you on that. Um, I will say this, uh, ladies and men, men try to. Get in your kid's life. If the man is not there, the mother, do you have a good male role model or male that can talk to this individual, that can show them good traits? Because that's what's going to have to happen. That's what's going to have to happen. Or, and then I'm going to throw a little bit of religion in there because we don't do it much anyway now. Start going to church, Sunday school. Even if you didn't go, I remember when mamas would sin and fathers, even if father didn't go and mother, you finna go to church. You finna see something else because we have to, with these young kids, you got to start it when they're young because when they're 14, 13, sometimes it seems like they too late. They beating up mama. They are beat up daddy. And where, that is where, where is that where is that anger coming from? Yes. Where is that anger coming from? It's the okay. frustration of the mother. They see we, it from the mother. It's not a peaceful mother that's coming home and dealing with the kids. This is an angry mother. You yes. ain't did this, you ain't did that. They get that same anger, that same energy that she's portraying on them, they take it out in the streets. And young boys and girls are starting to do it too. They'll shoot at the drop of a dime. Yeah. They will shoot at the drop of a dime. So, men, I'm appealing to the men. We have to do better to be in the kids' life. If we're not, if we're not locked up, okay. And then grandma, grandpa, all of that stuff. Because we have a lot of in our community, it's a lot of grandmamas raising kids right now when they should be relaxing. And they can barely deal with them. But programs, I'm going to say programs, Kane. I don't know if you, you're for mm. that. Mm. But I, I still want that old saying, Chicago, we hear about these places, Chicago, old block, all of this stuff. What would happen if a bunch of men got together, if we got together and walked? We're not going to have this. Are they going to shoot us down? What will happen? And I, I'll go back to, I'll say something. The Nation of Islam, back in the day. Back in the day, they used to march. They used to be out in the communities. They still may do it. So I'm not knocking them. But men, if we got together, and it, it'll take a big effort, and we... I don't know, a weekend. 
we marching. We going through our community. We're not trying to mess with downtown or anything like that. No, we in the hardest hit communities and we walking around. Is it going to be a gunshot? Are you willing to lay down your, are you willing to lay down your life for these kids, for the black family, for violence? Mm -hmm. I think that's 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 the biggest thing because if you don't have the mother, the father there, or whatever, whatever, men, can we take it upon ourselves? Because I don't know another way. Other than you know, I'm gonna say it. What? Hey, won't he do it? <laughs> hey, we can so, pray. Y'all have heard. What do you say? Just pray about it and go to church. <laughs> well, pray about it and go to church, and everything will be fine, right? Is that that's basically yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Well, we, gotta, we can't just do that. We can't just do that. No, it's, it's action, and you need action. And the action is promote what's right, emulate what's right. Yeah, you can go down there to the corner, and then they may not go down into the corner. Because what happened is, think about this. If I'm on the corner, and then I got all these men trying to tell me, like, hey, you're doing wrong, you this and that, don't be out here doing that. I get it. OK, yeah. But if they come, if they come and do that, then it's like, well, I'll just move to another block. Or I just don't be out there. When I see them, I, I move. Yeah. Avoid this. That's basically what it is. So if we had to uh final thoughts for um combating violence in the black community, what what do you say, Mitch? You say build a community center and a bunch of men get together walking the block. Is that what you're saying? I, I didn't say build a community center. I don't want you to. I don't want you to go on that. That people, you gotta well, listen. To well, what jump, jump, in the, jump in the uh, community center then. Jump in yes. the. Jump, yeah, jump in the community center that's already built, and and hopefully the kids will come because it'll be a babysitter for the uh, the, the baby mamas and all of them. There'll be a babysitter. Well, so I, it will. It will. It, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. Thank with you. That. Thank but, you. But. I'm just saying that's basically what it is. It's, it's an after school program. You go there right after you get out of school, and then they, we'll have some men there talking to you. And they, are they listening? Highly, Maybe. highly vetted, highly vetted men. Mm -hmm. Highly vetted men. Because we don't we don't need anybody trying to do anything crazy towards our kids or whatever. But we need some male leadership in this. Yeah. Are we gonna stand yeah. up? That's it. Uh, yeah, it got to start yeah. with us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It start. It starts with That's the it. man. It definitely yes. starts with the man. So, um, but yeah, to combat uh, violence in the black community, I say, you know, you said your piece. I say, you know, push the narrative of family. Push it yes. on the media. Push it on social media. Push it on TV, movies, uh, music, everything. Push the the narrative of family. And it will be ingrained in them, just like the shooting is, just like yeah. the shooting that you see or whatever. It'll, it'll, it'll be the same, and you know, be that be that positive role model. Just like I said, the men need to be involved to be that positive role model. So, yeah, we'll 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 close with that. So you get our different views. It's the uncomfortable truth. Roger that. All right, hey, baby.